And our next set of uh, presenters is, uh, is John Billy, which is the CEO and partner at Blue Fragments. And he's been most of his working life, I guess, for a quarter of a century, involved in, in uh, the, the technology world and, and IT. So, and he's been uh, helping customers grasping with, in, with new concepts ever since they came online, like the basic notion of internet, cloud computing, and, and so on. And, and prior to being at Blue Fragments, he was uh, at Microsoft for 14 years and uh, CGI at ten, for 10 years. Uh, and his, uh, to assist him, we have also uh, Mr. Jonas Inge Peterson, who is the director of finance and IT of Rikis Lörgustjóri Islands, the commissioner, uh, the police commissioner of, of Iceland, uh, who will assist him. Is, did, I, did I say that correctly? I hope so. Well, and uh, uh, the notion they will, they will focus on uh, is mobility and how to take your company beyond email and calendar. There you go. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hi. And first of all, thanks for the nice introduction and thanks for clarifying that I will be um, helped by Jonas and not corrected by Jonas later on uh, when he will enter the stage. Um, it's a really honor to be invited to speak and spend a few minutes with, with all of us in this room to talk about how we see things move forward. And always when you think about how to stitch a presentation together, you think, well, who's, who's going to be in the audience and what ties us all together and how do I put something on slideshows and talk to Jonas about making it relevant for everybody? So we figured that we were all curious to learn. That's why we showed up. We all all have some sort of touch points with IT, and because we're in this room, we also have uh, interest in mobility. So that's how we stitched it all together. And I invite you all to be part of a time travel for the next 30 or so minutes, where we'll go a little bit back in time, and then we'll stay current, and then we'll move forward in time. And the good thing is, back in time we can all relate, and moving forward we can all imagine, but nobody knows. And we will talk about how we see things will change and really radically um, challenge every one of us as individuals, but also how we work. And we also got a little quiz and prizes for you. Uh, yeah, and in Denmark, it's something uh, we have a concept called Friday candy. So if anyone got kids, that's the concept. You buy Friday candy, and the price is a bag of M&Ms. You can choose the one you want, without pe or with peanuts or without peanuts. But we'll get back to that. So hopefully. Um, as uh, IBM and Frank said before, buckle up uh, and let's get going. And this was uh, this is this is the room you're in, if, in case you um, uh, you missed it. So I'm from ancient times, and some of you are too. Uh, I was born in 1970, and I've seen things evolve that the world hadn't seen before, and it really literally took the world with storm, and then it disappeared again. And that one of the things is the tape. Deck. Remember the tapes, you know, the magnetic tapes, and the magnetic tape came and it allowed you to record music, and then you could tape the take the tape and put it into another uh, tape player, and it could play music. And then came along the Sony Walkman, and then you could walk around and you could listen to music, and you could do the same thing with films, just on a VHS um, tape. And if you're into Seinfeld, you probably remember uh, Seinfeld. He had a little uh, answering machine where he had smaller tapes and then you could uh, transfer messages around on tape. Now, the concept of transferring messages or music or videos, whatever, haven't really disappeared. You can still do that, but the media is vanished. It's just gone. And literally yesterday, when I was li on LinkedIn, this picture popped up to me from a Spotify convention, and it encapsulated this notion really, really well. It, said, it says vinyl, and then came along the cassette tape, it was replaced by the compact disc, then got, we got download, piracy, and then came along Spotify, uh, which is really, really good. And I'm not here to talk about Spotify, but a comment underneath this particular picture said, well, does this really mean that Spotify will be out of business and irrelevant in a few years? Because you can interpret it that way. Um, but it's also how we should think about technology. The things that are really big and matters a lot to us now is most likely to be gone, say, in five or 10 years. Maybe, perhaps, we don't know. And just to put us on, on the same page, um, I thought I'd spend a few minutes on where we actually are today and where we're heading into. 
uh, because it's really important for the next couple of minutes in the presentation. And we are at a point in time where we, are, we will see more devices connected to the internet than there's people on the planet. And that's pretty, you know, pretty daunting to think about because now almost everything we see on the web has been generated by humans. But soon it's going to be generated by some other stuff. So it's going to be tiny devices like uh, this one, Internet of Thing, a little chip that goes somewhere. This is not, by the way, one cent is not the price of that chip. It's just to put how small it is. Um, and that particular one is, is a research chip done in somewhere in California, and it goes behind your eye, and it can measure how dry or wet your eye is. And soon they claim that chip will be liquid. So instead of having that in, you can just infuse it, and then you've got chips in your, in your body. But that will actually just mean that everything will be connected and deliver stuff to us. It could be a simple, we, got a, uh, we, we will have a magnet in our office that just measures how often we open and close the door. Because then someone in the office will say, we need to clean the door handle soon, because more than 100 people touched it. But if you're into cleaning business, it makes a lot of sense to do that. And it's really cheap. It also means, and I think Frank pointed that out really well, um, we're moving into a world where experience is going to be way beyond the device. And if you have happened to travel in the Copenhagen airport last week or this week or sometime sooner, you will see a really good example of this. Because they just installed uh, more than 200, I think it is, really big screens throughout the airport. First airport in the world who's done that. And this screen is, is obviously a, um, a marketing screen. It shows ads for you, but it reads who you are. So when I walk by the screen, it says, here's a male, he's probably in the 40s, he's wearing a suit, he's, he's having a carry-on, and he's having um, a hand luggage bag as well. So he's probably a business traveler, and he's heading towards this gate, so most likely he's going to Reykjavik or Munich because they can just put those data together. And the second later, someone else passes by, could be two adults and two kids, and it will know, well, these guys are probably most likely going on vacation. So the experience for me is really good but it's also a guarantee for whoever wants to market stuff that it's targeted directly to you. <coughs> and a few seconds later, you can flip it. So it's going to be worth a lot to do that. So that's the physical aspects. Now, if I can get this stuff to work, I've got movies to show you. Short ones. Uh, the first one uh, is not Avatar, by the way. That's not a short movie. But uh, <laughs> I, put, I put the picture up here. Because if you remember the Avatar movie, you remember that you, you saw some computer an animated going into a movie and you sort of saw the blur between what you can do with computers and real life, and that sort of, of blended in. At, at the time, I thought it was really neat and it was really well made. Um, but if you look at it now, like old movies, any old movie, and you see what you can do with graphics today, you'll think that Avatar was pretty you know, fun back then, but, but now it's, it's a little old to look at. So this is the movie that I would really like to show you if I can flip the fi pictures around. And it's going to be, I just want to show you how you can do computer animations. Here we go. Um, there. And we got Ed. And I want to show this one. Because you can see how computer guys who makes, who makes these gaming, they play around with facial recognition. Can we have the mu music on? Cool. So if you see this face, this is how they animate the face. It's to c totally computer generated. But, and how they play around with um, human facial expressions and emotions. And if you see it's the same face, and just by touching a little bit with mouse, they can navigate and touch and, and use the entire face. I'm just going to stop it there because some of you might think, yeah, that's really nice, John. It's just in, uh, it's just in, um, used in, in gaming. But if you take this concept and remove all the helping aids you see, and you take this guy, this guy is called Ed, and Ed is a same version. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? not a human, and I think it's damn close. Yeah, short movie. <laughs> um, and this is how they made it. But you get it. Now take this and... And let me just get rid of this one.
and think about the notion of CRM. Think about I, um, uh, Apple got Siri and Microsoft got um, Cortana. Huge crunching computer power that lear is machine learning and learns about you. And if you take that notion and you take interactions like this, when you call your company up, they know everything about you and you'll be greeted by somebody that looks like this. No human interaction at all in the future, not so far away. And just to wrap it up, that is something that I don't really just is, uh, is imagining. You can see that all the smart guys, Gartner, IDC, etc., this is the predictions they have about the devices over time. And we are somewhere down here in the 2015, and you'll see the division of all the devices that will explode, and the price will come down, and everything will be connected. So what does this mean, and what's the impact of all this? And you can look at financial, you can look at the economic impact and all these things, and I thought I'd do what uh, most people have done so far. They look about what is the impact in the workforce. And here's the internet really, happy, uh, really handy because you can just type in jobs that no longer exist. And this is what comes up. This is jobs that no longer exist because of technology. So here we have ice cutters that were really, really relevant when we didn't have refrigerators. Now we do, so we don't have ice cutters anymore. And this is my favorite one. This is the human alarm clock. This was before we had alarm clocks or smartphones or whatever wakes us up. So this guy was ordered to be at and, and wake us up or wake me up at 5.30 in the morning, and he would, if he could touch my window, he would knock on my window or throw stones or whatever and wake me up. And if you find this on the web, somebody obviously posted the question, who's waking up that guy to wake you up? Um, so that's, that's what happened in the past, but if you look ahead, the really spooky question is, what jobs will not exist in 20 years? And this is images that you'll see. And what's similar with all the images is they all have human touch points. Because humans need sleep, they need food, they're in a bad mood or in a happy mood, they're unreliable, they complain, they need salaries, and all these things will just naturally be impacted by all these things. Now, James Bond or Sean Connery in the middle is, um, is there because uh, acting is up for grasps. And I thought of that for a while, and I have a kid, Yelde, he's six years old, and I asked him, who's your favorite idol character in the world? And you cannot ma mention Messi or Ronaldo or any of those guys, no. From movies. And he said, uh, well, these guys from uh, Skylanders, and this from Star Wars, the Clone Wars, or Lego, whatever, Batman things, no real human beings. It's all artificial stuff that he's, he's looking into in his idol. Not even Superman, by the way. Um, so, you know, depending on your age, you're already there. And the franchises associated with creating avatars or human, uh, sorry, computer-generated things are just really, really big. So, literally, I'm on a mission. Because uh, I get the opportunity to talk a lot of uh, customers and companies about how do we take the next step into this world that we imagine and we see this. What's the next step and what do we do? And I really, tr although we are a consulting company and we evolve around technology, I really try to do uh, things else um, in a different way. I try to say, how can you take and save some money on your infrastructure and invest it into mobility? And one of our business partners challenged a large municipality and said, if we can save you between two and four million Danish kroners in the next six months. Would you take that money, please take that money, and fuel it into a mobility project in elderly healthcare and see what we can do with that? And they were up for it. And hopefully those two to four million, because of the savings, will f would turn into maybe eight millions, and then we got a really good snowball rolling, because we all know it's about budgets at the end of the day. And this was one of the ways we try to overcome it. Um, Jonas will talk about how we get more um, police for our tax money. And one of the things we talked about is this one. We're helping a hospital. Um, so they got patients in that are in a coma. And when you're in, or at least these patients, when they woke up, wake up for a coma, they don't know why they're there. So they wake up and imagine that. And they got tubes down the throat and they can't speak and they have no idea what happened. And so to improve their lives, it's really, really easy. You take a device that's touchable and you can predefine that says, why am I here? And it's going to be read out. Why am I here? Uh, or I have to go to the bathroom or whatever it is to communicate with doctors and nurses and relatives that are there. So helping patients to a better life using some of the technology we have. Now, that's, this is something we can do today. So it's just dragging us to where we are um, today and not, not in the future that we just talked about. So I'm going to skip this in interest of time. And here's the quiz. Are you up for it? 
Are you up for it? Anybody who didn't say yes cannot win. Okay, here's the question. In fact, I would argue that there is not any job anywhere in any industry at all that's not going to be impacted on the basis of what I just said. Now, anybody in this room who can prove me wrong wins the M&Ms. Anyone? Sorry? Penalty. Parity. Parent. Is, oh, so you're claiming parent is a job? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Yeah. Well, it was, it was on my list, and I, I, th I can't remember if I erased it or not because I thought it was too cheesy. I actually had one that said, give parents more time for their kids. Because then I realized if I got more time, would I actually use it with my kids or would I do something else, work more, whatever. Um, but, but I think it's, which one would you like? <laughs> this one? Here you go. Thanks for, thanks for the question. But I think I made my point, right? The impact is going to be really, really, really strong across... Um, any industries. So another question I have, and this is a pop quiz. Now we're moving into the part of the presentation that says, so how come some organizations are moving along and some aren't? So why is somebody stuck and somebody's moving on? And my question to you is, and you don't have to answer this, this is just a brain exercise. This is a hotel downtown Reykjavik, according to the web. And you and I are outside this hotel, or you and I, you and I, whatever. And I'm claiming that behind one of the doors in this hotel room, there's a hundred doors, by the way. Behind one of the doors, there's a million dollars. I can't tell you which door it is, but I invite you to open all the doors. And here's the question. Would you go through the hassle of opening a hundred doors to find the million dollars? You don't have to nod. I know you're all thinking, yes, I would. And so the se I would too. And the second question is, what if I rephrase the question? I said it's behind two doors. It could be a hundred there, nine hundred there, two fifty and seven fifty. It probably wouldn't make a difference. You would still go. I assume. In this in this little test. Now, if there's any skeptics in the audience, they might have hesitated and thought, well, so are the doors locked? Uh, do I get the keys? Can I break in? What if there's a fire? Do we have one or two sea floors, etc.? So all these things start to evolve, um, especially if you're in the hotel business, perhaps. And my point is, if you know something about a problem, and you do because that's where you work, you probably have issues and problems, you see all these obstacles to move along. But if you don't know anything about what you're about to grasp and get the million, you're up for it. That's just human nature. So when we talk about, so how about mobility or Internet of Things, probably not in Iceland, but in Denmark, this usually happens. Oh, it's not on the budget, it's too complex, no resources, immature market, no one asked for it, we need more security, we're not ready, we have more important stuff to do, not invented here, so it's not my idea, it's not going to happen, not really in our strategy, and so on and so on. But it's the same thing. And I think, and this is probably the, uh, the place to... Um, to, to highlight what this is all about, I think it's time to take all these obstacles and think ahead. Just remove them for a while and think, we need to get going. And the guys who did that, I call them pioneers, they resemble three, three things. And IBM put it really, really nice. If you have this, if you have data that you can either do something with or you can collect data and put it in, so you're on a good roll. And most of us do have the data and have access to it. And so you need to find somebody that's really, really happy and, and fueling into technology and in particular mobility. Find, find those pioneers, find those hearts and souls that will, that will do this for you because they will most likely be told not to move ahead because of all the reasons we saw before. But if you find the people, they will move ahead. And then lastly, those people will have to understand and really firmly believe that mobility is not here to stay, but it's here to replace the typewriter. Replace. So it's here to replace. And if you do this, you will be able to do whatever you want to do. And these are some of the brand names you know. And in, on the right side, we've got some of the really cool Danish companies that have done it. And I'm sure you've got the same experience here in Iceland. I saw the, um, the quiz up presentation, really good presentation. And they had a lot of obstacles. They overcame it. And they're about to ship something really good. And this is where we do the transition to Jonas. 
because Jonas was one of the pioneers, and I had, you know, really enjoyed working with Jonas. This is not how he works, by the way. Um, this is just a really good image. So you know, I've worked working a lot with Jonas, and I've been inspired by the tenacity of moving things along and driving his business um, towards a mobile future. So with that, hand it over to you. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, Regarding on uh, this presentation, Jon asked me to talk about why and how. Quick, uh, why? Because the benefits are there. Uh, looking into uh, the operation of the police, uh, we have to look in what is the police doing? What are the interaction of the police to society? So just a quick question. Has anyone in this room had a speeding ticket? <laughs> yeah. So that is an interaction where the police is a, has a, had interaction with you all, except those who didn't show their hands. <laughs> uh, but looking into the workflow of the police, uh, we did a, an analysis on the time spent on filling out forms. So usually when you were caught speeding, you stayed in the backseat of a police car for 10, 15 minutes while the police officer radio in asking for confirmation about your driving license, uh, filling out a paper form. And then you signed the paper form and said, well, thank you, much appreciated to get this fine. <laughs> um, but afterwards, the, at the end of the shift, the police officer had to go into the office and take the paper slip he filled out on, the, on site, and then he had to key it into our police data system. That was another 10, 15 minutes, depending on how many fingers you could use to write. Uh, so looking at this and saying, we have the data, we have a good back-end system. How can we extract it and put it further out to the workers out in the field? So when they key in, the, for example, uh, your ID number, they will get the relevant data on screen. They will get uh, your history if you are frequently in the backseat of a police car. <laughs> so they already have this information. And then just pressing few keys, they will get next, next, next. So there's a wizard, and you have a speeding tickets in about five minutes. And you don't have to go back at the end of the shift, taking a paper input and putting it into a digital form. For five minutes, in the back seat of the car, all the work is done. But bear in mind that you also have to uh, look into the the working force who are handling these tasks. Uh, the application you're uh, putting out in the work field must be intuitive so that the users uh, can access all the data and regardless of the IT know-how of the workforce. And bear in mind that we are seeing uh, changes where the new persons coming out in the working environment, they are born and raised in the digital age. So they will ask, why should I have a fill out a paper? Why? I can do everything online with my mobile or apps. So why should I? So we are delivering an uh, environment uh, for all the workforce, on location, putting out the information uh, out in the field. Uh, regarding how, it's basically you have to uh, charge ahead. If you see the benefits, try to break down the problem into smaller bite-sized uh, problems and try and test each step of the way and be willing to, to fail in some of them, but minimize the risk by breaking it down to a smaller problems. 
Well, I already got the yellow card, so <laughs> I'm not waiting for the fine. <laughs> so, thank you. Okay, so, yeah. <clears throat> so... What does yellow mean? Does that mean done? No, that's the red one, isn't it? C can I just spend two minutes? <laughs> okay, thanks. That's a tough one to say no to, isn't it? Um, but I think what, what was really interesting uh, in, in this case was there's a lot of technology behind this story. How do you connect a police car across Iceland? How do you keep it secure? How do you take the data? How do you make this system that you know, is uh, in somewhat uh, written in one language and then provided to another one? How do you make it appealing to a police officer driving 150 kilometers an hour down a gravel road? And how do they navigate? And they would like to know whether you got an arm permit or whatever. How do you get all these things together? And so you could paint the walls with excuses not to get going, but Jonas didn't. Um, so I think that's really, uh, you know, a really good example of how to move forward. And if you get a speeding ticket and you get a lot more of them uh, in the coming years, we're the one to blame, not Jonas. Uh, he just picked this as the first project. So with that, thanks a lot for listening, Thank and you. I think we've got questions. Thanks a lot for this interesting call lecture here. And uh, we have a couple of minutes, so we have some room for, for questions. And there's still one prize here. So. Yeah, you can have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bribery? <laughs> So, anyone wants to to ask these gentlemen a question? What if you get a bag of M&M? Sorry, I'll buy you one later. <laughs> okay. Only one at a time. There you go. Uh, Can you repeat the question so yeah. everybody hears? Uh, the question is, what, what next? What, what are the next low-hanging fruits for us? Um, already we are creating uh, the, this, in this application uh, what we call shoplifting or the minor offenses. Uh, the second phase will be uh, dispatching. So instead of radio dispatching the police officer to, end to the scene, they will just get the tasks on the tablets and they will accept, or not. <laughs> Excellent. Anything else? Okay, if not, we'll give them a round of applause. Thank you.